So at some point or another, whether it's your mom or dad, your neighbors, or maybe even your best friend, they're all going to go through some sort of medical emergency. And uh, maybe you're home alone with your younger sister, and she cuts her finger really deeply. And she's in a state of shock and panic, and no one knows what to do. So uh, first aid courses are offered in many communities, and some of you may have even taken courses locally. And uh, many job places nowadays will require you to have some sort of certification for first aid and CPR. So having, knowing what to do and how to respond in an emergency situation is a critical skill to have. So according to an advocacy report in 2010 by the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies, approximately 7 million people have been trained worldwide. And of those emergency victims, 90% are saved by ordinary, ordinary people like you and I. So uh, the British Red Cross states that if a first aider is able to provide details such as any changes in conditions or consciousness, pulse rates, this can prove vital to the emergency responders that are called out to that scene. And some common emergencies you may uh, see are head trauma, cardiac arrest, as well as excessive bleeding. So uh, brain injury occurs when the head is subjected to significant trauma or force. And statistics from the Center of Disease Control and Prevention uh, says that about 1.7 million people worldwide uh, are, uh, they end up with traumatic brain injuries. And of those, 32.5% of those come from falling. So like in workplaces, falling off ladders or just slipping. The first aid for that, um, <clears throat> you can't change the severity of the injury that they have sustained, but you can do simple steps to help them and their chances of survival, like calling EMS, you're going to stabilize their head, and uh, in the event of a seizure, you're going to just protect them from objects nearby. So. Uh, cardiac arrest is when the body uh, <clears throat> is unable to pump blood throughout, and this can be caused from abnormal heart rate or heart rhythm and uh, the heart disease. And one in three victims survive after the if there is a bystander there that knows what to do. So saving someone's life. Um, the simple steps from that are going to be calling EMS, perform chest compressions, and use the uh, <clears throat> automated external defibrillator. And so that outcome is double or triple their survival chances. And excessive bleeding. Uh, the average uh, human has 10 pints of blood, and the, after the loss of two, two pints of blood, you may be in shock, and after you lose five to six, you're most likely going to die. And you can get excessive bleeding from a laceration, hemorrhaging, <coughs> amputation, so like if you're using some machine at work, and uh, a gunshot wound. And then, so the simple steps, once again, are calling for EMS, and uh, going back to the example of maybe your home with your little sister, uh, had you have gone to a first aid course, you would know to control the bleeding by applying the pressure and uh, calling EMS. And so the tourniquet, you're probably not, you probably wouldn't use a tourniquet for a finger, but if it was on like an arm or a leg, that might be a more appropriate method. So, in conclusion, uh, anyone can follow those simple steps to help save someone's life. Um, of course, the taking
taking a first aid or CPR course would go into more depth on how to properly do those procedures. And it would, when you get certified after taking these classes, um, you can't be sued for trying to save someone because you are protected by the Good Samaritan law. So I urge you to take a first aid and CPR course, not only for that knowledge, but if and when the time comes to act upon and help save a life, you can do so and save someone's life. And so go online to the Red Cross's <clears throat> website to find some local courses that work with your schedule. And remember, anyone can save a life. Yes. 